The dignified stranger carried a leather case held by a strap looped over his shoulder. He wore a black robe of good quality silk, but it bore no official insignia. I'm not from the post, said the man. Li Chuan had been sitting at the shop counter, her head bent, working mathematics problems. She hadn't bothered to change from her blood-spattered work robe. Her hair was pinned up. She'd now grown accustomed to wearing it that way. Mrs. Chen slept on a mat that she'd unrolled on the floor behind the slaughtering bench. Who's awakened me? she called out. I beg your pardon, said the stranger, peering around the room to find the source of Mrs. Chen's disembodied voice. We're closed, Li Chuan explained. We reopen at 5.30. She'd been working diligently to finish the last of the nine chapters on the mathematical arts, wanting to complete her study before the teacher returned. You'll have customers when you reopen the man said. I hope so, she replied, not looking up from the papers. But I wish to speak with you privately. Ask him what he wants, Mrs. Chen interjected. Li Chuan returned the ink pen to its stand and rose to her feet. This was a man of some experience, but he was now awed as if he'd seen an Arabian gin arise from a bottle. The slaughtering girl was far lovelier than the picture on the scroll, and she towered above the man. The styling of her hair added several inches to her already ample height. He bowed deeply. She offered a nod. My grandmother wants to know what it is you want. I'm Guo, an emissary of Huang Jimei. Mrs. Chen now sat up on her mat. She and Li Chuan looked at each other neither recognized the name. Perhaps you've heard of the Iron Warlord? They hadn't. It wasn't so surprising. There were now as many warlords in China as flies. The visitor unslung the leather bag from his shoulder, reached in, and after a moment of searching, removed a photograph. He handed it to Mrs. Chen. It showed a handsome man of about 30, dressed in a Western-style military uniform. The woman squinted at the picture and then passed it to her granddaughter. A soldier, she said to Li Chuan with a dismissive huff. Mrs. Chen didn't have a high opinion of soldiers. 